Our objective today is I can solve word problems by drawing a picture. So let's start with this first one. Word problems are just math problems, but they're set up kind of like a story. So our first problem says Daryl has eight toy cars. Jackson has six toy cars. How many toy cars do they have all together? So when I'm thinking about this problem, I'm going to read it sentence by sentence now in order to draw my picture with it. So I'm going to start with my first sentence. Daryl has eight toy cars. So when I look at that sentence, I'm going to label it as Daryl, and I'm going to draw eight toy cars. Now, if you're doing this in person, you may not draw cars, but instead you might just draw a circle for each of these cars. But you're going to show that Daryl has eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, my next sentence says Jackson has six toy cars. So now I'm going to label Jackson and I'm going to draw six for him. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now that I have my picture drawn, I'm going to read my last sentence, which is my question sentence. It says, how many toy cars do they have all together? Now that word all together is a good clue that I need to add these because I want to know if I combine Daryl and Jackson's cars, how many do they have? So I would write this as an addition problem that would have Daryl's eight, eight, plus Jackson's six, six. And then if I wanted to, I can just count the total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So for my story problem, Daryl has eight to car toy cars. Jackson has six toy cars. How many toy cars do they have all together? My number sentence would be eight plus six equals 14. Let's try another one. This one says Lily has 11 bracelets. Isabella has three more bracelets than Lily. How many bracelets does Li Isabella have? So let's again read sentence by sentence and let's draw our picture with this one. So I'm gonna start with Lily has 11 bracelets. So here's Lily, and let's draw her 11 bracelets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. My next sentence says Isabella has three more bracelets than Lily. So here's Isabella, uh, and I have three extras. One, two, three. But now when I look at my sentence, it says, how many bracelets does Isabella have? So Isabella doesn't just have these three because she had three more than what Lily had. So I'm taking all of these together, what Lily had plus the three more that Isabella had to find the total number that Isabella has. So my number sentence would be the 11 plus the three more and so your total equals 14. Do you see how, when it says how many bracelets does Isabella have? It's not just three that she had because she had three more than Lily. So you have to count how many Lily had plus the three extras. So 11 plus three equals 14. Let's look at one more. This time I want you to do it with me. So go ahead and have your piece of paper and your pencil ready. This one says, Cora went to the playground. She saw 12 kids playing there. Then five more kids came to play. How many kids were there in all at the playground? So again, let's read sentence by sentence. Cora went to the playground. Do I have anything to draw from that sentence for my math problem? No, I don't. So we're going to look at the next one. She saw 12 kids playing there. So for this one, I'm just going to draw little smiley faces for the kids. But again, if you just want to draw circles or dots, you could also do that. 
So she saw 12 kids, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, let's go on to the next sentence. Then five more kids came to play. So let's add in five more. One, two, three, four, five. So my question sentence says, how many kids were there in all at the playground? So in all is going to be a clue, just like all together, that I'm going to be adding. Because I want to know out of the 12 that were there, plus the five more that came, how many are there in all or total? So my number sentence would be 12, five. I'm going to take the total of my 12 and the five more that came, and 12 plus five, is equal to 17. All right, your independent practice for today is a solve it strip. And so I will go over the directions. There's directions also on this page if you need it. But what you're going to do is you're going to cut out along these dotted lines and you're going to cut these into little strips. And you'll notice that each one has a problem but some of them also have answers. So you're gonna start with a problem that says start, and it's 19 plus 10. So after you cut it out, you'll start with that one at the top. And before you glue anything down, you're first just gonna solve each problem. And if you wanna solve it on scrap paper or dry erase board or something like that, that might work best. So I would solve 19 plus 10, and I know that 19 plus 10 equals 29. So I'm going to look for the strip that has the answer that's 29. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Here's my answer of 29. So then I would take this strip and put it in the second box. Because the first one was start, the 19 plus 10. That answer was 29, so I'd put that one right here. And then I'd solve the problem on that strip. So on the number 29, it's 32 plus 32. So then I'd find the answer for that one and put that one in the next box. And so your goal is to fill them all up and you want the finish to end up on the last one. So if you solve all the problems right, your finish will end up right there. And that's why it's important to lay them all out first to solve all the problems and then wait to glue until you're done. Because if you made a mistake or if you have to go back and make changes, you don't want them glued down yet. So this is something just for you to practice your addition as we're working on word problems this week. So this doesn't need to be turned in. It's just an activity for you to practice.